Welcome back to our series on using SQL change automation with Azure DevOps. I am Kendra Little from Redgate Software, and I am here with... Steve Jones from Redgate Software as well. And in this series, we've set things up. So we've got the Northwind database checked in to a repo that's up in Azure DevOps. And right now I'm in the Azure DevOps portal. And I can see here in my repo, here is all of the code for the Northwind database. And Steve has submitted a pull request, which you can check out how he did that in the last video that Steve did. And if I go down to pull requests, the first thing I see here is currently no pull requests need my attention. Now that just means that nothing is specifically assigned to me and you can customize what appears in this view. But if I go over to active pull requests, I can see, oh, here is an active pull request that needs some activity on it. So I can click on the pull request itself, and we can see that some, some really meaningful <laughs> commenting has been going on in the review of this pull request. So you don't have to like approve or reject it right away. If you want to look at the different actions you can take, you can do different things with this, but you also can just review the code and make comments on it if you want things to happen before the pull re request gets approved or if you don't want to just outright reject it. So yeah, thought. so I think this view is similar to what Microsoft Teams has where you kind of see Kendra's uh, avatar and you see my avatar. I haven't set my avatar, I should fix that. Uh, you know, and then as Kendra had comments, I'll see them. So if Kendra would type a comment right now, it would actually appear on my pull request screen as well, which uh, which I have up on my own side of things. Uh, I don't know if I get notifications about that. Kendra, we get that. You know, this is a great, we don't need Slack anymore. We yeah, should exactly. just do pull requests for, uh, for chat activities. Yeah. <laughs> my my well, new suggestion. Yeah, well, that's interesting because I see an avatar on my side, but you don't see one on your side. It's oh. fascinating. <laughs> So Fascinating cool thing how this works. In terms of reviewing it, we've got a couple of different options for how you want to review it. If you want to look at all the files that have changed, you can go to files, but you can also go over to commits because a pull request, in this case, this one just has one commit, but it could have multiple things that happened and that were committed individually. And then the pull request is coming in to merge this from branch Steve into master. If I ever am confused about, hey, what's this pull request for? Hey, there's a branch Steve. Right. This pull request is a request to merge it into master. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing. Like I don't ever use a commit tab because I care about the body of work, not whether it was committed yesterday and today or multiple things like that. But I do like, having the branch tell me something about what's going on. Is this a, you know, is this gyro ticket 556 or work item 1100 or is it Steve making a change or whatever? Mm -hmm. uh, it is easier for me to just keep track of it, especially because sometimes there's lots of branches <laughs> going right. on. I, I do, I am a frequent committer just because um, I like to kind of note in a different commit, okay, here's what I've done so far. And then the yes. next that you know, I may want to go back at some point before I ever do a pull request. I may be like, oh, that, that was a bad, that was a bad call. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's an interesting way some people do that. Like they'll, they'll only commit, like they'll commit this table change separately from the view change or something else to say that these are two different items. Right. So and either way. I like I like in here that it has different uh, diff modes for reviewing things. Now uh, we're adding a lot of new things in this. So side by side diff versus inline diff isn't a big deal here. You can kind of see the difference on the SQL proj file that got modified down there. But I think it's kind of cool that they've got that feature in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click approve on this pull request. And now it says, hey, we are um, complete. So our pull request now is complete. And if I go back to uh, pull requests here, we can see that this is assigned to me and it is updated just now. So if I go back in here, I'm going to go ahead and click on complete. If I look at my different options here, I could still abandon this, but I'm going to go ahead and click complete. I have approved it. And now I have, com I am completing it. I think I said, uh, this isn't the status yet. This is an action to take to complete. Right. So, 
the interesting thing you have there is delete the branch after merging. Yeah. Right. And I don't do that by default because my database changes tend to live a little bit longer. And because then I would have to relink my development database to a new branch, you know, right. pull more code and that kind of thing. I tend to like to just keep pulling code from, you know, syncing up from master to my branch and then pulling stuff down. But I guess that depends on how you like working, right? Because most application developers work in a stateless manner. Right. Right. So they're creating yeah. new branch all the time, but our database is a stateful object. Yeah. And it probably, I mean, it did default to checked, by the way. So I have unchecked it and then rechecked it, but it did right. like suggest, hey, you probably want to delete this branch. So if you don't want to delete the branch, you kind of have to be conscious of it when you're completing this thing because you have to take an action to say, hey, hey, don't actually uh, yeah. do that. So I am going to go ahead and let's leave the branch there because I think it's also going to be cool to see that I, even though I didn't create this branch, I am perfectly capable of seeing this branch because we're both connected to the same version control system. So right. now I'm going to go ahead and complete the merge. So there was a pull request in and I approved it and then I checked the complete and uh, it is now merged. It did become, you know, as soon as I approved it, it did become assigned to me because it's like, hey, you approved this, you probably should complete it. Right. So now that this is here, I mean, we do, it's not permanent or it doesn't have to be permanent, right? There is a revert. So if you make mistakes, it's not like it's necessarily uh, forever there. Correct. I'm gonna go back into Visual Studio now and I've got the Northwind project open. And right now I am connected to the master branch. I'm gonna click down you know, here and we can see that, hey, I'm in master. Now I've just merged that branch into master. If I look here on the remote, like I only see master there, but yeah, that's you, because I haven't refreshed anything since Steve made that branch. Well, right you're now. not connected. Yeah, you'd have to make a get connection to find those other branches, I think. Yeah. Uh, so. I'm gonna click on, you can click on either of your version control little things down here. This tends to be how I get around in here. I don't have anything to push, but if I click on that little push icon, it brings me up to my synchronization here. And I can now say, hey, I want to uh, pull. Now pull is saying, I'm gonna pull the current branch. I am in master, so it's going out to Azure DevOps and it's looking at what's in master. And we, I just moved that pull request in, so now, I have pending scripts found. So I can now look at this. Let's say I am like, wait, I don't know what this is, right? Because maybe right. I wasn't the one to approve this. Maybe I'm another person in the team, right? And I didn't approve this pull request and I just you know, did a, a pull there. I can examine what the, the scripts are if I want. We can see here that we've got a file here. So we can actually, uh, open the file and see what is it going to do. Let's minimize our window here, get a little real estate there. And we can see that it's going to create the status lookup table with that primary key on it. So this is one of our migration scripts there. Yeah. And I do, thank you SQL prompt. It's great that you have an update. We'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs> I did that so, earlier today, actually. <laughs> I already refreshed it in Management Studio, but I haven't done it in Visual Studio yet. Uh, yeah. if, at any time, I'm like, hey, what, you know, if I forget, like if I haven't opened this project in a while and I'm like, hey, what is it going to apply this refresh to? I can at any time check what I'm using as my development database down there. Northwind Dev is perfect for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click Deploy, and it's going to run through its little uh, build and deploy cycle there. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and in my changes bucket up here, I can see that migration script that has come down as well. So once it completes, the little circle will stop moving at that point. There we go. And now we are back to refresh. So I should also see in my offline schema model down here, we now have uh, the offline schema model when that uh, migration script ran and deployed, you know, said, oh, um, well, actually, there's a couple things that happen, right? So I, I refresh from the remote uh, source 
And it said, oh, we need to apply this change to your development database, but also just in the files that were pulled down, there's both the migration script, that incremental script for the change, but then also uh, the change itself committed an update to the offline schema model that represents the state of that table as well, so that I can have a read-only view of that down there and know, hey, what is the state of that in the master branch? Yeah, right, and that becomes more valuable over time, right? As we alter the table, you you often want to just see what does it look like now, right? I don't yeah. care about what changes we made along the way. Right. Yeah, because your migration script might just be add a column, and I'm like, okay, that it, I know the table has one column. <laughs> what right. other columns are in the <laughs> yeah. table? The offline schema model will help with that. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I actually just did refresh the master branch, right? So I have connected though again to the to the origin though. So now it actually knows about the Steve branch because right, we didn't right. delete that branch. And if I want to go ahead and switch to that branch for any reason, even though it's already been merged in, I can switch around to that branch. I just, you know, if I'm doing branching, always need to be conscious of what branch am I connected to? And is it the right branch for me to do work in? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's actually click here. And I wanna switch to master. <laughs> like, I think come you on, can double click switch. master, it'll actually oh. switch somewhere. I, I think I was click, I think I needed to click up yeah. here and I wanted yeah. to click down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the remotes are just the metadata from Azure DevOps, right? Whereas the yeah. two at the top are your machine. Yeah. So I think on my machine, I don't see that. I only see, where's my Team Explorer? So I have a different view because I have never pulled master, right? I In the last video, I only pulled my new branch down, which tends oh. to be my habit, right? So my habit is I will set up my own branch and pull from there and work there. Very cool. Um, yeah. And so in application development, you know, you tend to pull a branch, make some changes, send it back, and then delete the branch and then you kind of restart each time you do work. But that's hard in database work because we have this overhead of creating a database. Right. <laughs> and I don't want to lose my data, my test data or anything else, at least for now. So. Right. Um, well, and you know, for I, certain, if, yeah. if I was doing a change to that would take, let's say I was working on some complex data update change, right? And it's not a matter of, hey, I can just finish this change in an hour. And I actually have a significant size database behind it that I'm doing some testing on. I might actually want to change my database connection. You know, I might actually want to have two copies of my dev database and have right. one of them associated with that branch. And then just when I switch to that branch, change the connection to that database so that if I do need to go back and look at something in master, I actually, you know, haven't changed the data in my normal copy of the database. So this right. allows and, me to do that as well. And that was one of those things that was really hard in the past, right? I mean, if you look back five or 10 years, that's cumbersome because I'm backing up and restoring all these copies of the database, doing something else. But that's one of those places where SQL clone has made it so nice for me because I don't care about any copy of the database that much, you know, right. I just get rid of them and, and rebuild them as needed, uh, which yeah. makes things easier for sure. Yeah, we have the, um, the easier it is to put a database in place, the more safety we have with doing some experiments, right? Of, oh, what right. if I rewrite the T-SQL this way? Does it get faster? Um, you know, I need to be able to reset it to test it again. <laughs> so it's much exactly. nicer to be able to do yeah. that. All right. Well, All the right. pull request. Oh, say again. No, I, say, I think uh, we got everything done in this little section of development we wanted to, right? Yep. A pull request is approved and the change is here. And now anyone on our team who's pulling down from master sees that. So in the next segment of this, we are going to talk about, okay, so we now we have this centralized repo of our code. What are the first steps we need to take in terms of automating the process of validating this code and deploying this code in Azure DevOps? So uh, join us for another adventure soon. <laughs>